All right, welcome everyone to this week's uh, Force Friday, right? With me, Mike Matezi. And of course, we have with us again, Mertunje. Hey, Mertunje, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah. And Swenley, how's it going, Swenley? Good, good. Excited as always. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I think we have a lot of really great, um, simple, and very applicable tips for you guys today on how to bring more weight to your drawing, right? So um, it's actually a pretty big deal. Uh, this idea again of, of weight and drawing, um, I, I think we take it for granted because gravity plays a big role in that and gravity is a force that we're dealing with day in and day out, but that we take for granted, that we ignore, right? Because it's invisible, it's not very obvious and yet it's symptoms, right, are visible because nothing's floating around, right? Everything is stuck to the ground. The one thing I really like about uh, gravity, besides that it exists, thank goodness, is uh, that it's perfectly vertical, right? So those of you that uh, don't know about this, there is something called a, um, a plumb line, right? That like they use, let's say in construction, um, it's the same thing as using a level, right? When you're like doing construction or putting up a, a painting or something on your wall, right? All those types of things work because of this very simplistic rule of gravity and how it functions on the planet Earth, right? Always pulling down to the core. So how do we use that? How do we bring that into drawing? Um, for me, a lot of that, a lot of my uh, sensitivity to this came from uh, working in animation, right? When you're an animator, you really start to become aware of gravity and physics, right? Gravity affects the physics of the world um, tremendously as well. So uh, you want to start trying to bring that that kind of thinking together. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to start us off with a bunch of sort of high level rules today, and then um, we're going to have Swenley and Ratunje uh, draw for you guys and you know show you how those rules get applied right and then as usual we'll be um interacting with you guys through the uh, chat so if you have any questions or comments then please type them in there um, i haven't brought this up over the last sessions but we do have um, a prize for a winner if we do get over 150 likes you know so as you come in um you know hit the like button if you're enjoying the video uh, we do have something we want to give away to you guys for for coming in and hanging out with us uh, so let's get started right <clears throat> So uh, I started with this here. Um, this always is uh, intriguing to me because, uh, because I've done this myself. Uh, just to give you a little personal background, uh, I had this done to me or I did this or was asked to do this when I was in high school. I remember it was senior year of, uh, of high school, actually. My, our phys ed teacher uh, had us do this. And he basically, what you do is you take something like a chair and you put it against the wall and you put your feet up against, you know, like your feet up against the wall and try to create a 90 degree angle with your back and put the top of your head against the wall. So you could see a woman and a man doing that here. And, you know, we were eight, I was 18 at the time. So all of us like, you know, muscular over muscle jocks <laughs> would like go over there and try to like lift up this chair. And the irony here is of course, the more muscular and sort of top heavy you are, the less opportunity you have of lifting this chair up, right? The goal is to have your head against the wall, lift the chair up to your chest, and then like be able to stand up straight. And none of the guys could do it, right? Like we just could not, you know, once you lifted the chair up, now you have the gravity of your chest and the weight of the chair hanging over that space between your hips and your head, right? Touching the wall in that 90 degree angle that you've set up, right? So here's the wall and you're kind of like this. And all this weight is sitting down here underneath. So you cannot get up, right? It's like no way to get up. You've made it worse for yourself. Yet the girls in class had no problem going over there, putting their head against the wall and just lifting the thing up to their chest and just standing straight up, right? Which is so weird. But it proves out the idea that in general, again, I'm sure there's a guy that can go over there and lift it up and there's a girl that might have a problem, right? But in general, um, a man's uh, center of gravity, the majority of their weight is higher up in the chest and in a woman, it's lower down in the abdomen and pelvis, right? Just because of anatomy, okay? So for fun, you know, I would say after today's session, go try it out, you'll see. Take like a kitchen chair, you know, put it up against the wall, create a 90 degree angle with your body and try and lift it up. And you'll see uh, how difficult it is if you're a guy. <laughs> now, if you're a woman, you can pretty much 
easily stand up, okay? So this is important, right? This is actually important for what we're doing because, well, because you wanna keep in mind when you're drawing the figure uh, where that center of gravity is compared to other parts of the body to make sure that your drawings look balanced. Why does that matter? Well, that matters because that brings believability, right? And it's, it's a weird thing of believability because it's very subconscious, right? Again, we're not really thinking or aware of gravity, but it's you know, going on all the time. There's no on and off switch on this thing. It's always there. And if you wanna bring a sense of reality of almost a subconscious reality to your drawing, you wanna bring in this sense of weight, which is again, what we're talking about. So try this out, it's just kind of, you know, fun little exercise that you guys can take on at home. Um, we're also gonna to talk today about the gravity guide, do a little bit more of a deep dive on it. Uh, we talked about it, God, at the beginning of the year, I would say like 35 meetings ago. Um, Swenley's gonna do a little bit more of a deeper dive into that today for you guys. Uh, you know, it's like, what is a flower sack and some weights and angles? What do they, how do they relate to one another? And you're gonna see in that gravity guide how all this stuff works, right? The idea of weight, I don't know how many of you actually, you know, work out with weights or exercise, but um, it's interesting to be aware of the fact that when you lift something, how much weight it has. And again, that that is due to gravity. If gravity were weaker, of course, that thing would be lighter, right? And if it was stronger gravity, it would be heavier. So in a weird way, weight is determined by, again, the planet Earth. And it's not like we don't know this, but really wrap your head around that. Like that's so, to me, that's really interesting because it's all relative. Like if I took a 10 pound weight out in outer space, it wouldn't be 10 pounds anymore. It's just 10 pounds to us because we're here, right? Otherwise it's not 10 pounds. It's something else on Mars. It's something else on Venus. It's something else out in outer space, right? So, you know, being aware of that. When I teach in um, classes, you know, in physical classrooms, uh, one of the new things I started doing before the pandemic is I would try to find something that was relatively heavy in the classroom and I would have the model, I would actually, what I would do is I would hand it off to the students, right? So the students would pass it around class and I would say to them, I really want you to close your eyes and feel that thing, right? And why close your eyes? Well, because this isn't a seeing thing, this is a, a feeling thing. So you wanna shut off as many senses as you can, right? So if you, it's easy to close your eyes, you know, feel the actual weight of whatever that thing is. Like at CCA, at the California College of the Arts, um, they had um, some like plaster molds and stuff like that in the back. So I would hand one of those off to the students. It was pretty heavy, probably a good 20, 25 pounds, right? That's, that's got some, you know, like some weight to it, right? So they pass that around and then you give it to the model and the model is supposed to take a pose with this thing, not a long pose, <laughs> right? A shorter pose, of course, but hold that thing. And now you're drawing the model and you've at least now had the experience of holding that, right? And see what that does to the model's body, right? Like how does the model's pose respond to that? Normally, the photographs that you see online with uh, different models, um, they're not usually holding anything. It's usually just the model standing there that you're drawing. So it's easy to forget their weight, right? But, you know, Think about all of the weight that your, especially your legs and your feet take on, right? As you're walking around and standing day in and day out that is that they're carrying, right? So keep that in mind. It's again, it's a kind of simple thing to forget, right? You're looking at the model. You forget that the model weighs 130 or 180 or over even 200 pounds, right? Like what does that, what does that feel like? What is that weight on that person's skeletal frame Feel like imagine you were a scale <laughs> right and you could really see that that actually be an awesome thing to have i think in a drawing classroom is that the floor is a scale right so you see the model get up there and you can see the weight of their body no matter who gets up there right so anyway swenley's going to go over all of this for you right we're going to talk about the weights of the body um, a flower sack the importance of the angles i put this little um, physics diagram down here for you because again we're all drawers here we're all artists um, but so much of what we're teaching you guys is about physics, right? And force, as you can see it being called out even here. Um, so, you know, why are angles important? You know, how to angle, you know, how does an angle like this relate to the idea of gravity, right? So something's always pulling straight down. What does that mean 
if an angle is like this versus something is like this versus something is like this, right? So angle change is very important to a force that's always vertically coming down. So again, being aware of that. Balance, right? So now that we're in this headspace of gravity, as human beings, what we're working on all the time is trying to balance ourselves out, right? I don't recommend any of you getting on a tightrope over some kind of canyon that's got like a 5,000 foot drop <laughs> underneath it. Don't do that. Um, I'd grab this photograph to just show you, notice what happens when we try to balance, right? Look at what the guy did here, right? Notice the use of his arms. So that's interesting, right? That's very interesting dynamic to be aware of. It's like, what is the use of the legs compared to the torso and then the arms compared to the torso and the head? And how's the system in our body working across those different components, right? If you see trapeze artists, right, what do they do? They'll typically have a long pole. It's like, why do they have that long pole? Well, they're making themselves wider, right? They're basically making themselves wider over this little pinpoint of their feet on a tightrope. And that width makes the change of falling left or right more slow because they've actually made themselves a wider object than the narrowness of just their feet or their hands, right? So the longer the pole is, the wider you make yourself and your weight, right? Relative to gravity, which means if you're falling left or right, you have more time to adjust yourself, right? To keep balancing, okay? A small trick, by the way, this is a, a total aside, but this is something I, I learned way back and I thought was really interesting. Um, if you ever wanna find like, a good sword or a good silverware, <laughs> right? This just popped in my mind now. I do this all, I totally geek out on this, but if you were to have a sword, right? And you put one hand at one end and another hand at the other end, and you bring your hands together like this, right? What happens over time is that thing will teeter totter, right? And go back and forth and give you a sense of where its center of gravity is, right? So on something like a sword, uh, typically, you want that center of gravity close down to the pommel, so the, the center of balance is near your hand. It's not like it's out in the middle of the sword. It makes it a lot heavier to swing. The same thing goes for silverware, right? So again, anytime you take anything, you can take a branch, right? It doesn't matter what it is. But if you do this and you come you know, like this closer and closer together, the thing that you're doing that to will keep counterbalancing and counterbalancing itself like this until you actually find its natural center of balance, right? So just kind of cool little aside, right? Um, I grabbed this uh, Michael Jackson image from Smooth Criminal um, because what made this so exciting to watch is he's breaking the rules, right? And we've seen Michael Jackson, you know, when he was alive doing stuff like the moonwalk and people are like, how the hell is he doing that? And there is a technique to doing that than, that any of you can do. Um, here, they were cheating. It's not like he did this, by the way, okay? He did it, but he didn't break the rules of physics. They actually, from what I remember, the shoes were special shoes and the soles of these shoes were like locked down. There was like a groove in the bottom of the shoe that was locked down to like a, uh, like a screw that was sticking out of the ground that would lock the shoe down in place and then they would tilt left and right, you see? So, um, but when we see that as human beings, all of a sudden gravity comes into play. We're like, what's going on here? <laughs> How's he doing that? I know I tried that when I saw that episode, you know, that, that video, I tried doing that only to fall on my face, right? I'm like, I, I don't know how they're doing this, right? Like, that's so awesome. I figured out the moonwalk, but I had no idea how they're doing this only to find out like years later. Right? Same with me, Mike, you know, I fall on my face. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was, thank goodness. I was like scared there when Matunje Jay jumped in and he was going to tell me I was able to do it, you know? <laughs> right. I had no problem. And then he was going to show us some video of him doing it. <laughs> With no issue. You know? By so, the way, I know yeah. that uh, he, what he did in the video is with the help of the rope that that time he didn't figure out you know, how to do it on the live stage. So after that, he like uh, made special shoes and patented it. So yeah. that's why we were able to enjoy him live, like doing that kind of. Oh, interesting. Live, interesting. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's cool. So um, last but not least, um, we're gonna talk about the power of triangles today. So Mertunje is gonna be supporting a lot of this concept. I purposely went out and found architecture um, for this to show the strength of triangles because many of you may not know this, but my art career all the way back in high school actually started in architecture. I, I thought I was gonna be an architect. That's 
there was too much math that was getting involved. <laughs> I was like, I'm out of here. And then the dark night came out and I was like, I'm going to comic books. I'm leaving architecture. Um, but the strength of the triangle and what does it mean in the body, right? Mertenji is going to be showing you the trick of the triangle and how to make that work in the figure. And how does that relate to balance? You will also notice I grabbed triangles today that are asymmetrical, right? None of these are, ha are perfectly equilateral, right? They're, um, they're asymmetrical triangles, right? I forget the names. It's like isosceles and something else, right? Um, but they're, they're skewed, right? They're bending like left and right. Most of the poses that we draw do the same thing and you'll see what that means. Um, when it is like that, that means that you can see just in the buildings themselves, having different angles causes a sense of, of lean, right? That things are leaning towards one direction or another, right? Things are going this way or they're going this way. And even as I do, even just this with my hands, you know, you get a sense of like things are going that way it means force is going this way. So force is going this way in one part of the body, what's happening above it or what's happening below it, right? As force is leaning towards one direction or another, we wanna be aware of this, this kind of teeter tottering thing that happens in the body, right? So it's, I'm trying to think of which way is better to do this. All right, so like this, All right? So there's a lot of this kind of stuff going on in the figure. It's like, oh, this part of the body is tilting this way. So this part of the body has to come underneath it, right? And you get this kind of action in the figure. The rib cage and torso do this all the time, right? You're trying to get this sense of things balancing each other out. And you got these triangles going on in the midst of all that, trying to support all this like chaos and allowing you to be able to stand and walk and run and jump and so on, right? So like I said, Mertenje is gonna cover all that for you today. All right, so any questions so far? Um, it doesn't seem so. It seems like everyone's kind of ready to roll. Uh, the trick of the triangle, yeah. So we'll be talking about the trick of triangle. Welcome everyone. I see all of our regulars are here. Hopefully there's a bunch of newbies coming in as well. All right, so let's do it, right? I'm gonna send this over to you, Swenley. And yeah. uh, stop the share, it's all yours. All right, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, so weight and balance. Yeah, I think this is one of the, uh, for me then it's the thing that like distinguishes uh, force drawing from other drawing methods because I, uh, I learned from different sources but I never was taught, you know, to bring the sense of real physics to, to figure drawing and uh, like Mike mentioned before, in order to create like the illusion of reality, this is something that we deal with every day. You know, like Mike said, it can be turned off when you talk about gravity. So uh, it, it's also important to bring to your figure drawings. And something that we see a, a beginning artists, beginning students struggle with a lot. You know, how to how to keep uh, or bring that sense of balance to the figure. And I've seen all kind of tools out there, you know, they have this, I think this trick where you uh, draw like a straight line from the place where your nose is or something like that and to find the line of balance. Uh, but quite frankly, those tricks never really worked for me. And I found it just, you know, we live on planet Earth, we experience gravity uh, all the time. So just being aware of it and bringing that awareness to your drawing, that, that makes a, a big difference. So uh, I'm going to just uh, draw, do a quick sketch from this reference here and uh, and talking about the gravity guide and pointing out some uh, aspects of, of weight and balance that we see students struggle with. So let's start with uh, the torso mass. Again, simple standing pose, stretching. Going over, nice, nice angle here. This is pushing slightly out. Show a bit of the compression here. We're wrapping around. And let me bring in some form by drawing that center line. So here we have the big mass of uh, the body, which is the torso. And in teaching, we uh, teach students to start with the torso because 
is this big volume in which the uh, the limbs and the neck attach into. So the main weight, uh, one of the big main weights of the body. And of course we have also the rib cage. And we have the pelvis here. And you can think about the belt line to find the top of the pelvis and then create this V shape. So you want to keep in mind, let me fill this in quickly. In terms of the main weights, you want to keep in mind the rib cage. This is number one. And then we have the pelvis down here. And we also um, recommend students to tone in uh, these masses because uh, uh, darker tones tend to uh, create a sense of heaviness. I remember this uh, experiment that we did back in industrial design. They, they brought two blocks. One was light and one was dark. And then they would ask us which one we think is heavier. And of course, naturally, you would think the dark one is heavier, but the dark one was as light as a feather and the lighter one was super heavy, you know. But um, darker tones tend to imply heavier objects. So tone in uh, the mass of the torso, just to remind you of its weight, again, until you uh, automatically become, become aware of it in your drawing. All right, so we have the torso here done. Now we're going to add the legs, right? Because we have this big mass, now we have to make sure that it's balanced. So let's come in here and let's draw this leg. Simple shape for the foot. And this one is stretching. And the toe is compressing against the ground right there. And we can add the arms. going out and then we have the heads bending and you also want to keep in mind the head itself is one of the main weights of the body like if you imagine bending your head like this you can almost like feel the heaviness and the weight of the head falling to that side. And you can see all the stress in the neck muscle right here, trying to uphold that weight. So let's also tone this in. So then we have three main ways, right? We have the head, we have the rib cage, and we have the pelvis. Okay, so What's the main problem here? And I think, and believe it or not, this is something pretty common that we see like students struggle with when they start figure drawing. You know, like this figure would fall, no doubt, because there is too much weight over here and barely anything to support it. You know, like the placement of this foot right here is crucial for our balance. So let's draw a quick gravity guide here simplify it. So this would be the torso mass. Tone it in to remind us of its weight. Now we're just going to draw, now imagine like Mike showed uh, the, the references of uh, buildings, structures earlier. Imagine if this was a building, right? And we want this structure, this building to be balanced. And then we come and we put a pillar that is like this. You have a pillar right here. Now that's what I did with the leg. 
Now you can tell that this is going to fall over because the pillar isn't at an angle that is really uh, functional to support the weight, right? Same, same here. This one will be stretched. And let's say this is the ground plane, right? Again, then you get this Michael Jackson kind of situation. You know, you're like, what the heck is going on? Like the only way this figure would be able to keep balance is if she was holding onto a rope or something, you know, like when you stand in the subway, you know, like if I, the, mo the moment I do this, you know, you immediately like, oh, now, now this figure feels balance. You know, but by the placement of the legs alone, she would fall. So what we did would be the solution for that. Hey, is, before you do that, I want to just, can I say one thing? Yeah, of course. So I just want to share with you guys here. Um, uh, you know, what Twenly's starting to do here is what we're like calling the gravity guide, right? So we have that flower sack idea that we were talking about, like just really simple uh, torso, right? So we got this flower sack. And remember what, what we have in our favor here to understand all this is that gravity is straight up and down. So, you know, I could see like the edge of Swenley's menu here. That gives me a sense of what is perfectly vertical. And you just kind of have to look left and right. And it's like, what is the furthest thing to the right? Well, right now this part of her rib cage is, and if I draw a straight line down like this, right, that gets me here on the ground with her feet. You'll notice like Swenley was saying, well, her foot's all the way over here and this is all the way over here. And there's nothing else to compensate. And remember her center of gravity is like over here. So that's why this is going to fall, right? It's like, it's falling because because all the weights over here and we're out here and the the stands that make this thing stay up there in the air are all the way over here to the left right so if i go straight up from these right if that, there was something above this that would stand right it'd be totally balanced and you can move left and right over these a little bit but where she's at what swenley drew here um is if we go straight up from here look the foot's over here and all the way to the upper body is to the right right so no good, right? As, and as some of you, to your credit, I think it was Valerie and uh, Danny out there called it out, Swenley, as you were drawing. They're like, oh, Swenley, that's going to fall. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, yeah, that drawing's going to fall. He's purposely doing that to show you guys, look, this is not good, right? This is a very common mistake we see as well at the website at drawingforce.com that, you know, students come in and they're not paying attention to the body relative to the feet, right? Sorry to interrupt. Keep going. <laughs> No, it's good. It's all good. Thanks for the addition. Like, you want to keep in mind uh, a scale, right? Like, mm -hmm. if we were to compare this to a scale, like, the weight of the torso would be, like, mostly over here. And, well, there's barely anything, barely any weight over here. It would be this small, you know? So, we so have it. The scale would tip to this side, right? Because, like, the balancing point, if we compare it to the scale, would be this this foot right here this would be the balancing point that's and the fulcrum right? yeah the fulcrum indeed mm -hmm. like there's too much weight here you know so automatically it would fall so uh, it helps in mind to keep a scale keep a scale in mind when you're drawing and how much weight is to the left and how much is to the right and make sure that it's balanced all right so let's go and fix it like in terms of the gravity guide itself an easy fix for that would be to place the foot and if you look at the model itself like this is very straight right so the leg would be actually here this foot is at an angle now the problem is solved you know now all of a sudden you have enough support for this mass here you know and this other leg is pretty much like secondary to the pose like all of ma the main work is happening on her uh, left leg as you can see so this is pretty secondary 
so the important thing to keep in mind here to take from this is pay attention to the angles and in standing poses pay attention to the angle of the legs like uh, the angle of the legs and uh, in relation to that the placement of the feet uh, which Mitrunja will go more into of talking about the triangle but let me go back here and fix this drawing there's a question for you Swanli um, sex the artist is asking so if her so if her lean her back more it would be balanced right uh, yeah I think uh, she means uh, moving the torso like if you move the torso over to here for example then yeah and the placement of this leg would be enough to keep it balanced so yeah definitely yeah i mean that'd be one way of so fixing it right leg. you could try to lean her torso over to screen left a little bit more to get it over that foot she could counterbalance mm -hmm. herself right but the issue is that's not the pose right i think we just lost swindling yeah so let me um i'm gonna i remember the photograph i'm gonna bring us into photoshop until he comes back in something was going on with him technically yeah. so to answer your question um you know the pose was something like this right right she was like this and swenley drew her leg like this right and then the other leg was let's say something like that right so if she if she moved over you know, we, we want to be careful of this, right? This is here and it comes back up like this. You could fix it by getting over here, right? You could fix it. That's that's one way of handling it. I think that's what, um, uh, you know, CEX, the artist says there, right? Like this, right? You could do it by doing that. You could get yourself over there, but that's not the pose either, but that would work. That would start to work. You know, her center of gravity is here, plus you have a rib cage up here. This stuff starts getting over the foot, and that lean would start pulling it off, right? You back, Swenley? No, he just hopped out again. <laughs> I lost again. <laughs> he was there, and then he disappeared. Yeah. So that could work. The issue is, you know, what, what needs to happen here is that the pose isn't like that, right? The pose is like this, right? So she's like this. This is the yeah, your audio is very choppy. You're coming in and out, Swanley. You know, the pose from what I remember is she's like that, right? So yeah, as soon as we, we move if we, this. Yeah, lean her like torso. Sorry, Mike. Uh, if we lean her torso like back, the, uh, the drama, uh, like kind of a drama and the function would be a little bit lost. So, you know, mm -hmm. you have to like make it balance that way instead of just uh, counterbalancing her torso back. Right. Yeah. This, you know, I, I mentioned this in the text before, but one of the things, um, you know, all joking, is like I keep bringing up the idea of uh, architecture, right? Um, and I use metaphors actually quite a bit when I'm drawing. So when I see a leg like that, that is so straight and strong, I literally am thinking this in my mind, right? I'm thinking, you know, this is a column, right? Like her leg is like this to me, right? It's like super strong. And then it's like her, you know, her rib cage is like sitting and her pelvis is sitting like right on top of this, you see? So there's my metaphorical version of, of the pose, right? Like this. Right, and then that kind of really paints the picture for us, right? You see that, you look at that and you're like, yeah, that works, you know, as long as like this is over here. If I, po if I go too much that way, she could fall even at this stage. Let's say that's a sculpture of a torso sitting on top of a pedestal, right? It's like very finely balanced is where this line is and how much weight is on the left side versus how much weight is on the right side, which is by the way, why we have rhythm, right? Because we have this pushing over here and pushing this, right? So you've got all this, pushing of force back and forth, you know, and over here, right? So you get all these weights on the left and right sides balancing this out. And in that particular pose that Swanley showed us with her going to the left, um, 
she has that other foot there, right? Remember, she's got her other foot was going down here. And from what I recall, she was pointing down on her toes, but that's enough. This leg, my metaphor for this is I call this the kickstand, right? For those of you that have ridden a bicycle, you know, especially kids' bikes, you know, you have this like kickstand on there, right? On the bike, so it doesn't, you don't just throw it flat on the ground, right? So this is the kickstand leg, right? So you got the column leg, right? Column. And over here, you have the kickstand, you see? So there's our setup. She's working, right? Like everything's going to work here. There's nothing she can really do with her arms or head at this point that could make this fall. The arms are not heavy enough and her head's not heavy enough to really, to offset this enough. You could have poses where that could happen. You know, you push the arms just a little bit one way or the other and it could offset the balance too much, you know. Um, but in this case, she's not, you know, she's not doing that, right? So I would say, you know, you have her head, I forget what her arms are doing in this pose, but you can see what's happening here is we have, you know, we have a base that's this wide, right? And therefore now this works, right? This is sitting over the column, most of the weight of her body. You know, if I go up to her shoulder, it's like down here, right? So now we're from here to here, no problem. Plus we can go all the way out to the left. So the base is this wide. She can lean all she wants this way. She can't go that far to the right, right? Because right here is the edge of the column. She could fall easily if she goes too far that way. So what Swenley drew was, you know, he took the column and kicked it underneath her body, right? And then all of a sudden we were falling to the right and it doesn't work, you see? Any questions on that? Let's see, you guys understand? Yeah, that makes a really clear example. That's awesome. We call it the goat leg in Spanish. <laughs> we, that's funny. Uh, we can enhance the drama as long as we keep, yes, that's exactly right. So Beatrice, spot on. Uh, you can definitely enhance drama and push poses as long as you can hold on to gravity. Um, you can also, you know, it was mentioned earlier, the idea if this was in an animation, it might be balanced. That's true because if it's a frame or a moment in time, those counterbalances will be counterbalanced again, right through um, through action. So yes, that can happen there as well, right? So hopefully that that you know that all makes sense. Swenley, I keep wanting to take it over to Swenley, but it's, he seems to be having problems today. He keeps coming in and out. Um, any other questions? Let's see. Uh, so yes, you can definitely create more drama. Um, all right, I guess that's pretty much it. Unless I say, Mertunje, let's move over to yours. Um, we'll see if Swanley comes back in, if he has anything else he wants to add to this. Um, all right. Hey, there he is. Swanley, can you, uh, is everything working? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Well, it seems to be a problem with my internet connection. Yeah, you're still very like choppy. The audio is very choppy. Yeah. Did you have anything to add to this? Okay. I kind of, I kind of tried to, do what I think you, where you were going to go with all of this, right? Uh, no, I think, I think it's a good way to lead into Matunje, so. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop share and hand this off to you, Matunje. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, hope you can see. So let's, uh, yep. let's jump to my part of it. So what I'm going to like add on to what Mike and Swendy says, you know, again, we'll be talking about the gravity and uh, how to like, I'm going to just conclude all of this and then we'll present to you like how we're going to uh, bring the gravity and weight to your drawings with just some simple tricks and concepts. Okay. So let's jump to one of the main concepts is tr leg triangle. Okay. So uh, again, you know, it's in the name, the leg triangle. So it actually forms when, uh, you know, the, the leg actually carries like uh, all your weight, like all the time, okay? Like most of the time we'd say, okay? Like, uh, let's say you're laying on the back. So that time your legs won't be like carrying all of your weight, but yeah, uh, you won't be like sleeping all the time, right? <laughs> so if you're, even if you're sitting, like walking, whatever you're doing. So yeah, think of those little feet, right? <laughs> They're just like small, small compared to your body, but they're just carrying all your weight and the, all the legs. So yeah, um, this comes from there. So it, it's basically the angle that I'm gonna draw for you. Um, let's say the brush here. So the angle, the angle form like between two of your legs, you know, this create this kind of, uh, this triangle, okay? And it's, it's like a, 
shape that we that it is there, but we are just like simplifying it out. Okay, so yeah, uh, just simple like triangle. Now, what it has to like do with the bounds? Obviously, you know. Um, now, hope you have get some some of the insights of what like Mike shared about the architecture and what Swanley uh, had the with the gravity guide thing. Okay, so you must have now get some sense of what the leg weight is, uh, the leg triangle is. Um, so yeah, uh, you can see like different types of triangles. So you know, I can draw on top of it, and it's like oh, you can you can imagine like a body. <clears throat> okay, you can imagine like a body in here, and yeah, so. Let's say this is the one, and this is uh, kind of same as the uh, same as what Sven Lee drew, like that that pose for the balance. And you can see, like, uh, yeah, this triangle actually represents the angle of the legs, you know, of the figure. You can again imagine a figure here, and you can see that you know he's doing this, right? So again, uh, the feet in here, the his ear. Uh, I know it. This looks painful. <laughs> You know the tip. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look like a lot of fun. <laughs> ouch. But yeah, ouch. Yeah. But you gotta imagine it, you know, for the sake of drawing. <laughs> so again, you can see art this. Is, art's painful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's doing something like this. Now, what do you gotta do with this? Uh, I'm I'm just thinking that that's something they do something like this. So he's like kind of bringing the ties and in, in the foreshortening in the uh, foreshortening something like this and this is it and yet you can see like this is not like too much balance so we're going to talk about like how the weight is attached to that kind of thing you know there's like a funny thing here but uh just i want you to think of this as a triangle okay so imagine uh, a triangle between the legs you know and the top of it on the butts <laughs> and uh the angle okay and the two ends here on uh, the two ends here is the like kind of feet okay so yeah, a simple shape, okay, simple shape to keep you reminding of that, uh, keep you reminding of the balance, okay. Now I see here, I come up with a kind of Santa hat, okay. <laughs> so uh, this, what this is, you know, now you see like the kind, I attach a kind of weight to that triangle, okay. So now I see, you can see like it's kind of bending, right. And this is what I want you to like think of, okay, that triangle is not it's not free, okay? It's it's uh, the part of the body, okay? So you got a torso, okay? You got a torso here. Now you see the legs, but don't don't take them as legs, you know? She always like see the shape and I, whenever you're trying to balance or make poses out of imagination. This is a great tool when you're like drawing from imagination. This is like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this leg like here. Oh no, but I gotta make it wider. This triangle, I gotta make it wider, okay? So yeah, it, it like balances itself. So you see like this here, this uh, weight like that, what attached to the triangle. Now see the, this weight is much, like much, much greater. So it, it bends the triangle like to that, um, to that extent, right? So something like this, you know, this is a much lighter balance. So uh, yeah, you can also take these as curves. You know, sometimes I use it, but all, most of the time I use straights uh, for the legs. So yeah, you can think of something like this, you know, like yeah, weight attached to a triangle, and you can always think that yeah, uh, the triangle is attached to the torso, which has uh, a lot of mass. Okay, a lot of mass of the body. The upper part is, by the way, again like 50-50. So yeah, fifty percent of her body weight resides there. Okay, so you gotta make it balance. You know, uh, I come up those with are, this. Those are one. great, by the way, um, Matanja. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to say yeah, these are awesome. Like somebody in the um, chat mm -hmm. said, oh, you know, I love like simple examples. I agree. Like when you see stuff this abstract, you know, hopefully it really hits home for you guys. Like imagine the weight of the red ball, like Mutunjay specifically made one smaller and one bigger, right? So bigger in your mind, you think bigger is heavier, right? We all can kind of like think that. So he's showing you the bigger ball is heavier. You know, how, how would you fix something like that? Like this is going to fall, right? And when we're looking at models taking poses, they already fix that for you. You know, they're not falling. It's your job, though, to be aware as to why is everything fixed? Why are they not falling? They should be falling. They could easily be falling, but they're not. Pose after pose after pose, right? They're just standing there balanced, like, constantly, right? And what we're asking you is, hey, be aware of that. Be aware of their balance. What's making that happen? Okay, go yeah. ahead. It's, it's great. Thank you. Uh, this is also uh, allow us to like, respect the models because again, like they're balancing themselves, but uh, they are in a so much of pain. Okay, when you do certain kinds of poses, so again, like allows us to get that uh, appreciate that kind of effort. You know what they're doing. You know? 
modeling is a is a great art you know mm-hmm. should have uh, i come up with this uh, picture and this is a, a kind of nostalgic picture when i, I was a student and uh, you know i sent this for the premium workshop but i i thought you know it would be great to bring it here so you see this uh, this see this model and this is a very very unique model i the reason i just bring you is because of this pose here i mean this camera angle so uh, Murray, in this really close shot, uh, you can really feel her skill. She's, you're just like, oh my God, you know, she's like 100, 100 story building and I write it here, you know? It's like a blur picture, so I'm sorry for that, but you can see like it says 100 story building. So you can see like, I, I want to appreciate the scale of the uh, scale of the model. It, it's not about like too much of the uh, triangle, like the leg triangle here, but I just want you to think of uh, the model as a, as a building, like a, an architecture and I can do it just like Mike said. You also see like I did a plane here, you know, so you just like go around that hundred story building, you know, on your little plane and try to get the adventure out of it, okay? So uh, yeah, here's something it is. Um, I, you can think of modelers as like this, you know, uh, Mike uses this metaphor, I, I don't know, I remember, but he's something like this, you know, so there's like a model uh, like this. Yeah, it's like a model like, falling over on his back, falling on on his back. And it's like, yeah, he's like trying to balance with his hand here. And now this is like an architectural piece. So like little guys, you know, this is our like human skill. (laughs) And we are just like going into that doorway, you know, kind of thing. And look here, you know, this kind of like massive balance, like falling over here, okay? So yeah, you know, think of that as an architecture and you will will try to like, you will invent those metaphors, you know, trying to get that balance. And here we're specifically talking about the leg triangles. Okay, so you can you can think it like this, you know. Oh my God, this is like columns, you know, <laughs> like big columns and like people, like little people going in there, you know, trying to trying to appreciate the the scale and the like the balance of it, you know. And this is the crucial point: you have to appreciate the balance because it would fall on you. <laughs> okay, and you're gonna die. So uh, yeah. Just think of it like this, you know, that you're gonna die if it's not balanced. So thanks to the architectural, thanks to the po- uh, thanks to the uh, model that is posing for you to make it balanced. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Even people, mm-hmm. even people inside the pose, right? Again, since I, I've mm-hmm. come from architecture, is my kind of far background. I always am aware of the models like a building, and it's almost mm-hmm. like you can imagine them as a skyscraper and think of that as modern architecture and how they move left and right. You don't want people to die in the head. It's almost like the Statue of Liberty. I don't know if you have ever, any of you have ever been inside. I, I've been inside of it as a New Yorker, mm-hmm. but it's like the models like the Statue of Liberty and you'd have stairs in there. You can walk around, <laughs> right? You want to make sure that the whole thing is going to s- stand, right? Yeah, go ahead. It's cool. Yeah, so I'm just gonna doing like a simple torso. We're not gonna talking about the torso that much today. So, but the thing we're talking about is the weight of the torso. Okay, so specifically the weight, and I'm gonna talk much about this, like the line weight and all the you know that efforts that being pushed here. Here, but let's talk about the triangle right now. Okay, so yeah, a simple torso here. Uh, now let's talk about the leg triangle. So you see this, like how cool this is. You know, you know, it's like going here. And he's like trying to like bounce out in such a like dynamic pose. And he's just like, boom, boom, like the opposite nature of it. Like this is going here, this is going here. But uh, if I remove this leg here, let's say, right? Now suddenly he's like falling to that uh, with the speed of light, I mean, uh, kind of. So, you know, he's suddenly falling to that side. So you can see like how he's uh, balancing that out, right? So he's you now doing this, uh, he is uh, stopping that fall from his leg, okay, there. So, but what, what happens when we do this, okay? So what happens when you do this, let's say. So let's say you're drawing and you do this. Now look, now look what happened, uh, you know? There's like not enough uh, stoppage, okay, of this whole weight, you know? This is becoming so big, you know? I'm gonna tone it in, let's say, um, like, I'm tone it in for you. Yeah, you see like, So you see like this massive weight and that's why like uh, we actually like uh, recommend you toning it because you see really see like the weight of the torso, okay? So it's not shading, but it's just for you to, you know, present that uh, mass, that massive weight of the torso. Now see, oh my God, those little sticks, you know, would be able to help the model 
balance it out, you know, because like so much of weight is going over and you can see like the center of gravity is like where it is acting. Oh my God, it's acting out of the, the triangle here, okay? Something like this. The triangle is something like this here. So it's kind of like, again, back to the center thing. Okay, so here it is, but oh my God, just look at the weight. Okay, now this, this ball is gonna fall over. So yeah, this is what the model find the solution for. Because like, oh, like, I'm, I'm gonna fall there. So let me pick up my leg and do it, like glide it towards here, like just below where the most of the weight of my body is, okay? So then he was just like, oh, let me, let me drag this foot over here, okay? And trying to like, trying to like balance this thing out. So again, I'm not saying that, you know, gliding that foot up there is gonna, is gonna relieve all of his weight. So he, he doesn't can hold up pose, this pose like for hours and hours. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, you know, he just balanced it, okay? But the efforts, efforts are a little bit smaller, okay? So yeah, he still has a lot of pain. He won't be like able to uh, take, um, you know, keep up the pose for like a minute or so and he'd be really like uh, his muscles will be sore, right? Uh, one of the things, you know, to do this, I mean, there's like one exercise again, I'm gonna try to bring it up again and again. You can always take the pose yourself, okay? You're just like, oh, you know, let me, let me think, you know, how this could work. So take the pose yourself and try to, yeah. Oh, oh my God, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but don't fall, you know, take care of yourself. But yeah, try to like balance it over something like that. So what the final, uh, what the final piece is gonna look like, mm, let's say I'm gonna take this torso again and make a new layer. And again, you know, you can also sabotage this leg, okay? <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah, let me do something like this, but then I'm, let's make leg like this, okay? <laughs> so uh, I think this will balance. Let's say he's doing something like this, right? So again, you know, a lot of, maybe he's like gonna fall over something like this. Uh, yeah, if this, if this uh, balance, if this weight, you know, just, uh, like overcome, you know, this balance of the triangle, then, you know, it's gonna fall over. So something like this. So what the model like for find the solution as we already discussed, he's just like trying to make that triangle as uh, wide as he can, okay? And still able to hold up that dynamic pose, okay? So he can, he can do something like this, you know, maybe, right? So his uh, thighs would be like going into the, into the scale, okay? Like in the perspective like that. So he must be doing something like this, but he, he was trying to like give a certain pose. You do this, you balance the figure, but you lost a little bit of function, okay? Lost a little bit of function of the pose. So what our goal is, have the same function, but have it balanced, okay? So yeah, this is a solution, you know? So he was doing something like this and trying to get this leg out. And you see like with this thing, you know, coming out, this leg, this lower leg coming out, He's trying to like widen up that triangle, okay, to make make himself balance, right? All right. Any questions on the chat? Uh, no, no. Mm -hmm. There, it's been all going good, and people have noticed how important the perspective is. And you know, we talked about foot placement, as you just mentioned. Yeah, it's all good. Mm -hmm. So, how much time again? Okay. Uh, you got about six more minutes, seven more minutes. Okay. So, uh, I think we should jump on the next one. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, uh, just this one, you know, it's it's again like simple, you know, if I just like push him here, you know, let's say the leg is like this. If I push the leg inside, you know, again, you see like sudden he's just falling over. So yeah, try to find the, the solution. You know, the, model, the model is there. The model is uh, presenting you some challenges, okay? And he's also giving the answer, okay? He or she, whatever. He, they are just giving answers to us as well. So we want to like, we have the challenges and questions in our mind, but you try to find that those answers in the model itself, okay? All right, um, this is the one of the topics. The second topic is line weight, right? Yeah. So how to bring weight to the figure drawing? I mean, uh, this has always always been my question and as, as myself, like till this day, you know, how do I bring more weight or, uh, you know, that my desired weight, okay, is not to exaggerate, but how, how do I get the weight in the figure drawing as I desired, okay, as much as I desired? 
And answer to that is line, right? We are not depending upon the shading and the tonal values in order to bring the weight over. Uh, so our ultimate solution is line again, right? So how do you do that? And this is this topic is all again going to explain you some of the uh, like the the depth of the line. Okay, so line is simple. You know, anybody can draw a line, but what makes that line um, like value? I would say like lifeless. Okay, <laughs> and what makes a line like meaningful? Okay, and has it's kind of having life. So there's like a difference in both of that. So I know you can see like different types of lines here. Okay, again. Uh, so what are the different types of lines? So different types of lines are just like thin lines, you know, thick lines, like combination of the two, you can see the tone in here, right? You can see that this line is thick, okay? Uh, let me grab another color, okay. Okay, so you can see like this line is like thin, like really thin, okay? So thinness and you can also see the tonal range in there. It's like gray, it's not like that black. Okay, so it's, it's telling us, yeah, I, I'm having uh, less less pressure, let's say, versus this line, you know? So this is much more thicker, much more darker, okay? So the tone tonal value and the, the thickness of it, okay, is actually gonna give us the, like trying to like give the weight or the lightness, okay, to the line, uh, to the figure itself, okay? If you use this line, oh my God, you know, it's really thin, you know, it's just like in hair, okay? But if you use this line, okay, you can see like how it's, how it's like pushing in there, okay? So again, that this comes here, like to this point where it's just like, oh, just look at the applied force they're getting out of it, okay? Applied force is just, uh, you know, the force pushing on the directional force, okay? So you see this here, oh, this is, this is having less weight, but this is having more of it. You know, you see this, this is very, very aggressive, right? So yeah, uh, you can determine this uh, based on the line weight, the, the, um, the darkness of the line, the thickness of the line, okay? So try to use like different types of lines into your figure drawing and it depends upon the function of it, okay? So you don't just randomly give dark line and light lines to the figure, but where it's like most affecting, okay? So let's jump to the demo. Oh, but before that, you know, see this, you know, a comet, right? It also always reminds me of comet, it was like, ah, that, energy into that uh, certain point. So with this, let's say, oh, it's, this is like, like the comment, you know, it's approaching the earth with the light speed, <laughs> okay. having a lot of, lot of weight. So, yep. Yeah. So let's, let's jump to the demo, okay? So, you know, not this one. Let's, let's say we do this one, okay? This is a great photo. Mm, all right. So you see this, uh, you know, what the, what the model is doing, you know, the function of it, you know, he's all hanging, okay? He's all hanging, he's not touching the mat here, but just touching the mat with his like four, you know, his like four appendages. Uh, so the hands, like the two of the hands and the feet like this, and like creating a base for himself, like trying to get uh, up self, okay? Um, so how, you, how you're like trying to bring that in? You know? So I'm gonna change it. So you see this here, uh, the shoulder, like how it's pushing. I'm trying to like bring this, you know, this kind of like weight into it. You see like the, all the, like all the weight is on his like back and the buttocks, okay, the buttocks section, right? So I'm trying to like bring this, bring that out in here. Okay. See, I'm trying to like build it up. I'm gonna like build, building up in layers and layers. I'm not doing this, okay? So yeah, you can do that, you know, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to like, right now I'm just trying to build it up. Yeah, so to what you're doing, um, Ritunjay, mm -hmm. um, there's uh, one of our guests today named Andy, he was asking about that. Any exercises to improve line weight? I try to do some lines stronger and others lighter, but I feel like they're all fighting for attention. Mm -hmm. Oh, so. So what he's saying, like he's doing some lines, but they're fighting for attention. Well, and I think I think maybe you can talk to him. Like Daniel just responded to Andy about the roller coaster and the skating. You know, the soft touch, right? Maybe show what like the soft touch approach is, and you know how to control the control your hands better. You know, and maybe the roller yeah. coaster and the skating as well. Yeah, roller coaster, skating, skiing, the page. You know. The blind exercise is gonna help you a lot more in controlling your line weight. You know, that's that's a better exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see like, 
I'm just like trying to push push this thing and I'll try to like bring that weight over here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm just like leaving, you know, because you you need contrast. If you darken every line up, let's say right. I'm gonna drawing it like this, you know, now it's not gonna affect your drawing, okay? So I'm trying to uh, try to bring up my ideas down. It's like, oh, let me get this soft, you know? But now I'm here all of a sudden, oh my God, <laughs> I just want this, all the weight of the hand to draw here, okay? So I'm trying to like bring that out. You're trying to like bring in the contrast for your line, okay? So all of a sudden, if I do like, this is a connection line, okay? This line is a connection line, but if all of a sudden, I do, sudden like do this, now it's not gonna, not gonna make sense. Right now we are talking about the gravity. So I'm just like focusing on, on the weight parts. Like where's the like most weight? I mean, I'm trying to like bring that contrast in there as, as well. Yeah, I think, you know, to you guys out there um, in the audience, just to repeat what Mertunje is saying, you know, it's, it's in the contrast, you know, like all great drawing, the better you are at drawing, it comes from your sensitivity, how much sensitivity you have. And insensitivity is variety. Right, so dark lines that are curved or dark lines that are straight versus light lines that are curved or light lines that are straight, right? There's like these full spectrums across each one of these, these giant scales of, of one side all the way to the other side and everything that happens in between. And it's up to you to try to bring all of your ability over to that space, right? To have as much variety as you can. And the variety doesn't, it doesn't happen by accident. It happens because you become a greater artist based on how sensitive you are actually, right? You're thinking about the tactility of it and you're seeing things differently. You're understanding all of the minutia of all the different functions of the body, right? And that spectrum gets wider and wider and wider and you're able to like understand more and more information and that more information ends up getting translated into all different kinds of line. Yeah, I think it's a common thing for beginners to be like too heavy handed, right? With, with a line yes. work. Like I remember in school, uh, um, I was drawing once and a guy who wasn't really an artist uh, asked me to borrow my pencil. And the moment he put the pencil on paper, the point broke. And he was like, how do you draw with this? I'm like, dude, you're pressing way too hard on that pencil. Come on. You yeah. know, so to your point, it's about sensitivity and being aware that your line weight is communicating something. You know, it's not just you're, you're drawing, whatever. No, you have to be aware of what you're seeing with, every line and every aspect of the line also. Yeah, yeah very true. Yeah. You know, uh, all of a sudden you see uh, here, like what just Swenly is saying, uh, look here, you know, in the head, you know, there's like not a much of the weight presented in the head in, into the figure, okay? So as opposed to that, when I'm drawing this, you see, you know, there's like a lot of weight on his head. Oh my God, that massive weight is hanging you know, from the torso itself. You know? So I need to bring that up, you know, so it's, it really, you know, that's different in every pose with the, oh, the, is the face or the head is going to be having the, like the most of the weight, or it's going to be hand or it's going to be torso, you know, it's going to be feet, you know, whatever. So don't think that, you know, the only the feet is going to carry all the weight all the time, right? So here you can see like uh, the amount of weight that he's carrying over, right? Like here in his head, you know, he's like, <laughs> we that. And just see, you know, what his hand is doing, right? I think something like... to keep in mind, guys, right, is here at drawingforce.com, where, like they said earlier, I think Swanley may mention this, like we're not, we're not, or maybe Mertunje, we're not rendering, right? We're, we're using line, like this is a mm -hmm. line channel. And that's all you got, right? So you need to bring your imagination and your experience as a human being to you drawing, right? You, you have to say, I want to have weight in my drawing. I want to think about weight. Even without us here, just the mere fact that you're like, I need to think about weight. You start figuring out like, what am I going to do? Well, maybe I got to make the line heavier, right? Because I'm physically adding weight to my hand through pressure right? I'm pushing down, translates over to the idea in line that the line therefore has more weight. It's that kind of A to A, you know, response, right? If something, you want more force in something, you're going to have to push into the page. You have to draw with more power, more power in your hand, 
equals more force. You want something to feel like it's fast in the body. Chances are you're gonna have to draw with a little bit of a zippier, faster line in your hand to get that sense of the speed. You're not gonna make something feel fast by kind of crawling along, right? It, that's not how it works. It is literally how you think and how you act physically with your hands in order to draw with the tool you're drawing with for that to show up on the page through the act of drawing with line, right? Yeah. All right, so, you know, here we go now. Uh, just to conclude, you know, I'm gonna stop sharing now. Hope you enjoy it and you can see in the figure. I'm just really focusing on the that head being uh, pulled off by the gravity and the hand like he's pushing. I know there's like a uh, there's like a sense of his uh, that shoulder like uh, poking up there. But again, you know, it's because of the gravity. If he won't be like pushing onto the ground that heavier, you know, he won't be having that scapula like holding that up. So yeah, uh, just focus on the gravity, and I'm gonna conclude. And you know, you know I'm gonna stop sharing so we can conclude the stream here. All right, so um, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's uh, session. Um, if anything, I just want to leave you with the concept that you got to think about gravity. You know, it's like this very strong thing that we all deal with every day. And if you want to add a level of believability to your figure drawings, any kind of drawings, doesn't matter if you're drawing a car or a human, but if you want to bring believability to your work, you got to think about gravity. Gravity drives almost everything on this planet earth and how it works, how it functions, how it balances or does not balance. It doesn't matter if it's a tree, right? It could be a tree that we're talking about or like I said, a person. On a small side note, it just reminded me like I have fig trees in my backyard and we had one that was starting to go from vertical towards more horizontal, right? And it was like this, because and it was reaching this way because of the sun, right? So photosynthesis, the photosynthesis was driving it across the yard and guess what? It's desire for that food energy, put it in a place of danger. It could kill itself, right? Because what was happening is it was cantilevering like this and its root system was starting to rip out of the ground. So we hired a tree guy who came in and what did he do? He created a triangular bracket. So here's the tree, right? He made a triangular bracket that was like this, that sat underneath that branch to support it, right? So he had this thing that was all offset he stuck basically a triangle underneath it to help stand it up. Right now, the thing is more balanced. So it has more ability to grow out horizontally. Because when you go like this, right, the weight's not so terrible because all the weight is perfectly over the thing that's touching the ground, right? And that's where, you know, the ground is stopping it from falling. As soon as you start going more in an angle and you start going more horizontal, the more horizontal you go, you're spreading out the distance from one point to another and more weight is occurring, right? And that's what... That's what happened with the tree here in closing. I'm gonna actually sketch this really quick for you guys. Um, so here's my, here's the tree, right? <clears throat> it's like this, the tree used to be like this, right? And then all of a sudden started growing out like this, right, this fig tree, right? It's now like this. Well, guess what? Before when it was this narrow, this here is where all the weight is sitting. It's over the small base. And the base didn't change in size, but now all the weight is over here, right? So because the weight has now more width over gravity pulling down on all of this, in a sense, it's become heavier, right? So now you got a tree that's all the way out here. So this tree guy came in and he basically built something that looked like this. You see, like this triangular bracket, right? So now the tree is nicely hugged in there and it can grow out all it wants, right? Pretty darn far. It would have to go really far at this point to use this as a cantilever and actually fall down and over, you see? So same thing with the human body, right? So keep that in mind, foot placement, perspective, the triangle of the legs, the weight of the torso, which is really your rib cage and pelvis and your head, right? And how do those things Go back to this of correlating to one another, get that triangle underneath there, center of gravity, and try to track all that as you're drawing and make sure that your figures are believable, okay? All right, guys, as usual, thank you very much, Swendly and Matunje, for your support today. Hope you guys um, enjoy today's uh, Force Friday. Uh, we will see you guys next week, right? Have a great weekend, stay safe, and keep drawing with Force. Take care. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Yes. See you guys. Bye. Bye-bye.